legalities of it. You'd have to look into it, I guess. But <clears throat> you can sometimes run your own gas line. Sometimes they regulate the hell out of it, and you have to have like licensing and all that. We're actually fine to purchase and use without licensing where we're at, particularly out here uh, on free gas, which we've mentioned before, just meaning that we come off a gas well that's actually on our property. So our meter is actually down at the gas well and everything past that meter, all the way from the gas well to the house is our responsibility. So we're not actually not on a gas company regulation per se, but a lot of times, regardless of what the what the state law is, the utility or the gas company that you're on will have rules and regs for how you have underground gas or whatever. But generally after the gas meter is on you. This is underground gas line, polyethylene of course. Um, yellow indicates gas line. So if somebody were to dig into it and they see a yellow line that automatically says it's a gas line. And this is for direct burial and outdoor use only. You can't use this stuff inside. Just g generally not a good idea. For one thing I think is, let's say this is exposed inside under your house or wherever. Um, let's say rodents could get to it. Let's say a, a rat or a mouse or something could, could probably sit there and chew on this and then release gas into your house and you know blow your house up or something. <laughs> so for that reason and, and others, I guess, uh, you're not allowed to use this stuff inside and you shouldn't. So I did a lot of research on on the gas lines and gas fittings. Some of those gas fittings, they have like these push connects. I mean, they're basically like a sharp bite. They're not sharp bite, but they, they have these like push connect fittings for this type of gas line. Um, you have to have special, I, I think it's pronounced chamfering or camfering. I'm not sure. Um, pull uh, that you, you, when you make a cut, to put the fitting on and then you you have to like it 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 edges the inside or reams the inside to where it fits into the push fittings anyway there was a lot of expense going that route um and this is actually a line what do they call it home flex um i i'll let you know when this is all said and done if i like it or not but it was cheaper um, you get through Home Depot. I think the home part is uh, it's marketed through the Home Depot branding or Home Flex. It must be a Home Depot branding, I think. But anyway, um, they have instead of the push connect fittings, uh, I'll show you here in a bit. We're going to use them. They have um, uh, more of a compression fitting that you just tighten down on it. So we'll see how those work. Hopefully, hopefully they'll. It'll be as good as our, our red that they are. I don't know, but um, they, they were cheaper. They were a cheaper alternative. Um, and then one thing, if you go to do, if you go to do any gas line work of your own, um, that <clears throat> that was kind of confusing for me to, to go through, and I finally finally realized there is IPS and there's see I think it's CTS. IPS is iron pipe size. So in other words. This is a three-quarter inch uh, pipe, and it's sized to match up with your iron pipe or like your black iron that I'm going to actually be connecting to where it enters a building. <clears throat> um, and the those IPS, the Home Flex line runs with the IPS, uh, so those IPS fittings work out there. There is uh, uh, the CTS is those push connects that are significantly, it, from what I saw, it was significantly more expensive, um, kind of ridiculously so, um, especially if you're doing a lot of work. If you're doing a little small job, I guess it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't kill you to go that route, but um, that's copper, co uh, CTS is copper tube size. At any rate, my, 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 my current gas line coming from the well to the house, I dug up and looked, I was going to tap into that, but that is actually CTS, <laughs> and then I couldn't use the IPS. And I didn't have a converter to get from one to the other. It was just such a headache of trying to research this stuff. So, um, hopefully if anybody's going to do this, 
I've just saved you some time because I probably spent days, you know, pulling my hair out, <laughs> scouring the internet. I think I, I actually reached the end of the internet and had to start over. <laughs> so it, I'm telling you, it was like, nobody just comes out and tells you that. It just kills me. So this guy right here is called a riser. This is what you actually <clears throat> will connect to the underground poly pipe with this. Well, with this fitting, this is uh, this is the compression fittings I'm talking about. Um, this is going to fit this to that guy, and then this turn it transitions the poly into um, a coated steel pipe. So that way, when it comes above ground. It's a metal pipe. So underneath here, like I have uh, gas coming out right here. Um, this is where I just ran from outside. This is years ago, years ago. Uh, ran from underneath the house, out underneath this deck, uh, to where we have a quick connect for our uh, portable generator. And then right there is our generator tie-in for the portable generator. And this is actually just a, uh, Uh, an outlet box for like hooking up an RV or something. Oh, I forgot before I break into this, I've got to go out to the gas well, don't I? So, anybody has any interest, this is the actual well, okay? All the rest of the stuff you see is just peripheral stuff. This is the well, the well casing, I should say, that goes down the ground, right? Um, and then this casing, and then you have the the pipe down inside that casing. Turn that valve, boom, now we're off. Um, and this is just, like it goes through a dryer because it kind of comes out wet sometimes. It can have some moisture, some water um, coming out of the ground. So it goes through here to dry it, <clears throat> which actually just has like a alcohol base. I change it once a year. Um, and this is on me because um, the, the gas company does not fool with this. Once it branches off, going to, to our house it's just part of free gas you just you deal with it um, but <clears throat> I just once a year like I say I just drain it out and change it's like a basically what I use is like an RV antifreeze it's got it's alcohol based um, or not RV antifreeze what do you call uh, winterization like like you would put in your water lines and an RV to winterize your RV if you're putting it in storage for the winter um, that's what I use in here it, like I say, it's just like a alcohol-based stuff. <clears throat> and this is just a regulator where it's coming out higher pressure out of the well, and this just knocks the pressure down to a more usable form to send to our house. Now, this is where I'm gonna tie into the existing gas line. This is just Teflon goop. A lot of times I just use yellow thread tape. You can put on more than one fitting. Like I did this nipple and then this valve. And you can just turn, turn the one in the back and it'll turn through and tighten both. a plug in here and now in the future I don't want to take anything else off of there just pull the plug out connect it okay. for black pipe for gas line have you ever done it before it, uh, you can go to the big box stores or I don't know, any, any place they sell this stuff hardware store or whatever probably. but um, you can get these you know whatever diameter three-quarter half inch whatever one inch whatever um just for the volume of gas <clears throat> but you get them in different lengths already threaded now 
professionally, I guess, people that, that do this kind of work, they'll take long pipe, cut it, they thread it on site to whatever length they want. Um, but <clears throat> if uh, I, I don't, I don't do that. I just get, I kind of measure out and know about what I want um, when I go to buy this stuff. But I usually get a bunch of different pieces. Like I buy a bunch of extra fittings, a bunch of extra pipe <clears throat> of different lengths. So that way I can, uh, you know, there's something always not according to plan or whatever. And then generally with like most places, especially big box stores, whatever, um, have a pretty good return policy where whenever I'm done with the project and I have extra stuff that I don't think I'm going to use in the near future or whatever, I'll just, I'll just take it back to them. But anyway, um, that's what I do. I just buy extra tape back whatever I need, whatever. Works out. They don't have a problem with it. They don't care. I love this thing for cutting this pipe uh, because when you when you put this around it, around the pipe, this part here, and then you ratchet down on it, it keeps it a, a perfectly square cut. So you might be wondering why, if you've seen it in some of our shots, why we have these CDs hanging around in our backyard back here where the chickens are. That's because, as you know, if you've been watching our uh, our videos, that you know we had two chickens that were attacked and killed. We don't really know by what, whether it was hawks or coyotes or what. But um, doing some research, we found out that, it's, or so it's claimed that hanging like shiny things in your yard around where your chickens are can deter hawks. So it actually, the fitting actually has a, a, a mark on here that says pipe stop. So you know how far it's supposed to go in. So it's probably a good idea that you size it up here before you put it in. All right, there's the stop. And I know that's how far it's supposed to go in. In case you're not sure. <laughs> Sometimes you're not sure. <laughs> 